We all have just one life to live, just a fleeting moment in this universe where anything, anything is possible if you just believe and create and craft and ignite your passion. Do you see this glass jar with the ping pongs? Is it full? No? How about these pebbles, these rocks? Do you see them? I'm now going to add them to this jar. Here we go. Right there. In fact, why don't we do this? <laughs> Is the jar full? Yeah. What do you think? No? no? <laughs> and how about this sand? Do you see it? I'm going to add it to the jar as well. Here we go. Don't worry, Mr. Long, I won't be dropping it everywhere on the stage. <laughs> it's all right. Well, wow. I think we'll leave it like that. There we go. How about now? Is the jar full? Yes. I would like to ask you to recognize that this jar represents each and every one of your lives. The ping pongs, those are the most important things that you value. Love, compassion, caring, empathy. And at the heart of that ping pong is your passion. The pebbles, they're just the other things that are important as well. Your job, your car, your home. And the sand, <laughs> the sand is just the small stuff. It's just all the other things. Now, if I were to pour the sand into the jar first, there would be no room. There would be no space for the pebbles or the ping pongs. The same is true in life. If you spend all of your time and energy on the stuff, the small stuff that is not important, then you're missing on the really important things, the things that matter most to you. Now, I was born and grew up in Las Vegas, Nevada, the entertainment capital of the world. And it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Wherever I go when I travel and I meet somebody for the first time and I let them know that I'm from Las Vegas, it always brings a smile to their face. You should see all the smiles on your faces right now. <laughs> it always works. It always works. Hospitality was in my DNA. My father, he arrived in Las Vegas in 1954. He was one of the original owners and the executive vice president of the Hotel Tropicana. I spent much of my adult life working in the Mecca in the desert. As a member of strategic planning for the world's largest casino hotel entertainment company, my flame was beginning to diminish. I lost track of those ping pongs. Yeah, I was missing the very connections that were meaningful in my life. I was drowning in the sand. I met my wife, moved to France, and I stopped, I listened to my passion. I hit my career restart button and began to work in the reception as a receptionist in the front desk of a hotel in Paris. I found my ping pongs again. Yeah, by engaging and sharing and caring for travelers and strangers from all over the world, creating a home away from home, magically delivering the unexpected and making memories. <laughs> After five years, I was 
asked to be on the pre-opening teams of two new hotels for a major contemporary hotel brand in Europe. And today, today I am lecturing and coaching students in internships and personal development in Switzerland, the birthplace of hospitality management, continuing the journey that I began in the desert 30 years ago and in the memory of my father. I was able to share with the future generations of hospitality the ping-pongs and the passions I rediscovered. Steve Jobs, he was a college dropout, but it never stopped him from going to classes that he was curious about. He never let his passion down when all the research, all the focus groups were telling him his Apple stores were doomed, completely doomed. Jobs said that people who were crazy enough to think that they can change the world, well, guess what? They do. They do. And when he was just 30 years old, unbelievably successful, wildly wealthy, <laughs> a global superstar, it all crashed down. It all crashed down. He hit rock bottom. He was fired from Apple. And the shame, the shame, the shame was painful. He was gutted, utterly devastated. But not for long. He came back. And he came back by becoming a beginner again. Jobs entered the most creative period of his life. And he did this through his tenacity, his persistence, listening to his gut, and always, always following his passion. You need to begin and start paying attention to those ping-pongs, the really important things. And it all begins with you listening to your passions. Because everything else, everything else is just sand in the wind. When we go back and chart our existence, we, homo sapiens, became dominant through our social and collective abilities. <laughs> we have cooperated on huge astronomical scales. Imagine, just for a second, we landed on the moon. <laughs> we built the Great Pyramids. We split the atom. And from that same extraordinary cooperation, we created threats to our own existence. Nuclear war, climate change, and some, and some forms of technology. Infotech, biotech, maybe even a little of AI. But I'm here to tell you, it's disrupting the global economy, our jobs, our bodies, and our brains. We live in the most connected world that ever existed. We live in the most peaceful time compared to any other time in human history. Think about it. More people are dying today from health issues than violence. I mean, the effects of sugar powder is much, much, much worse than the effects of gunpowder. Globally, we are better off 50 than 100 years ago. So let's take a look at what's happening. Humans and humanity, we view our lives that revolve around these big decisions. Where will we live? Who will we date? Where and what will we study? <laughs> Even who will we vote for? <laughs> Guess what? We're outsourcing those decisions now. We are putting our trust into algorithms more than our own instincts and passions. 
And if we continue to put our faith in those instincts, in those passions, there is no algorithm that can get to know us better than ourselves. Our human relevance, our human interactions, when we have faith in algorithms, become less important. Love, caring, compassion, empathy. What do we do? No algorithm, no algorithm can do this for us. So you're asking yourselves, what now? What's next? For thousands of years, ancient traditions have told us to know yourself is the most important thing in the world. We need to stop. We need to stop everything in the present and focus on our reality. Because to know yourself is to observe yourself. And all of us need to do this more than ever before. Each of you needs to give time and make time for this. And it's not going to be easy. It's hard. It's sometimes startling to be alone with your thoughts, with your mind, and your passions without any distraction. There's nowhere to run, and there's nowhere to hide. I'm here to tell you that humans have persevered since the beginning of time. We are driven by our persistence to navigate through obstacles and roadblocks throughout our journeys. It was our passion that drove us to continue when we lost our job. It was our passion that drove us to continue when the experiment didn't work. It was our passion that drove us to continue when we didn't make the audition or do the first cut. Yeah. All of us, all of us have a mission to pass this passion, this light, this energy, to enable us to evolve and to rise to what makes us so, so very special. You are the captain of your life. You can create, you can craft and you can harness passion, and thereby bringing it to others and sharing it with the world. So this technology that I talked about earlier, that was a threat to our jobs, that was a threat to our relevance, that was a threat to our existence, you can use your passion and harness it to solve these threats. Our society needs to continue to advance, and technology serves us best when we don't lose track of our relevance and our humanity. We can and we need to do this together. Anything, anything is possible together. We need to start again. We need to listen to each other. We need to help each other. It could be in the classroom. It could be on this stage. It could be at that front desk of the hotel but we need to find our fat passion before we start to work together. So all, so all of the players in our future are working at their very best. If you lose your way, like I did in the sand, stop, listen. Each of you, each of you has a purpose if you just begin to and continue to listen to yourself and your passions, you can find your answers and you can find your calling. Each time I'm in front of my class with my students, I know that this is exactly where I belong. It's no coincidence I want to teach. My passion for hospitality, which was founded on caring and sharing, overlaps with my passion to transmit and to, develop, and to develop the future of hospitality. Finding my values made me complete in every sense, every sense. I am living and living from my passions 
contributing to others and the world for future generations. Our role as educators, as parents, and as friends is to help each other find these passions and develop it. Each of your lives are speaking to you. What's it saying? Stop. Listen. What's your spark? What's your ping pong? It's your passion. Let's stop throwing up our hands. We've got to do this together right now. We can't wait anymore. We all have a role. All of us, all of us are connected. And together, we can engage and take responsibility. Passion, it's who we are. It's our flame. We need to stick together on this one. When I left Las Vegas, I was able to reignite my spark and follow my passion. Doing so helped me make a contribution, and a profound contribution, a profound impact on my industry and the future. I want to thank you. I want to thank each and every one of you that has helped me along the way to help me rediscover my passion because it allowed me to contribute and it allowed me to become more influential. When we operate at our best selves, we create the best outcomes. And we can do this, and we can only be our best when we love what we do. I just have one more thing to add. All the passion that we talked about today, all the passion that we felt today, could not have been possible without self awareness. Self awareness allows us. To rise, to rise to our passions, to rise to innovate, to rise to move forward with love. Thank you.